Good morning. Uh, it's good to be back with you for another devotion. And I hope that everyone is doing well uh, with this virus pandemic that we're all going through. And um, in fact, mentioning that, it takes us straight to my devotion today. A few days ago, I had a friend to send me a text and she was so uh, concerned about everything and uh, expressing her fears that she was feeling. And, and I felt the Lord deal with me concerning what I wrote to her that I needed to also share it with you. So before we get started, I want to go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. And you know this verse of scripture very well, but I want to read it. In verse 7, the Bible said, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, our friend, she began to, in the text, she wrote out some different things expressing uh, the emotions that she was feeling. And one of them was that um, her husband, he still... Uh, is able to work the the, the job that he has uh, he's able to to go to work and and she expressed how that she worries every day that you know he'll come in contact with it and and catch it himself and and then she also mentioned how that if just one of the family coughs immediately you know just goes all through or it's the virus and somebody in our family's you know they're sick and have caught it well uh, expressing those feelings she also wrote in that text this verse of scripture she said I know sister Rita that the Lord has not given to us of uh, the spirit of fear and then she of course typed out the rest of it and I told her I, I said to our friend and I want to say it to you in in all that's going on there's many hearts today that are wrestling with fear right now. They're feeling that, that same emotion. They're struggling with it. But I want us to understand something, and if I can get us to, I want you to get a grip on this, and I hope I can do this justice. There are three kinds of fear. The first fear is a reverent fear of God. The second fear is a natural fear of danger. Then the third fear is a spirit of fear, and that fear brings torment. Now, the first two fears that I mentioned, the reverent fear of God, the natural fears of danger, these are God-given fears. The Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we know that that reverent fear that we have toward God, that is a God-given fear, and it brings to us, it, it is the beginning of wisdom. Then the second fear is that natural fear. It is that emotion that comes over us, that causes us to, to take off running whenever we see a snake. And I don't care if it's just a garden snake, you're going to find me running. Uh, that natural fear that if we're crossing the street and, and we see a, a speeding car come, we're going to run. We're going to get out of the way of danger. These two fears come from God. They're for our good and our protection. But then there is the third fear. And the Bible says it is the spirit of fear. And it comes, friend, from the very pits of of hell. This one does not come from God. This one comes from the very pits of hell. And this fear, I want to help us recognize it. This fear plays off of our emotions. This fear generally it feeds off of, and I, this is the things that people would describe that they are feeling right now. It is the what ifs. What if I get it? It is the fear of the unknown. What's going to happen if one of my family member gets it? It's the fear of the future. What's going to happen to our nation? We're shut down. If it goes however many more weeks, what's going to become with the economy? And on and on and on we can go. These things belong solely to God. The unknown and our future. 
And if we can grasp the fact that our unknown future is in God's hands, when we can grasp that, we will come to the understanding that He will not allow anything to come our way without Him being faithful to see us through it. And when we place our full confidence in Him to keep us safe, it drives out the fear and it brings peace because we know God is in control. Friend, the devil does not have any control of our future. He doesn't have any control of the what ifs. He doesn't have any control of the unknown. Those belong to God and to God alone. But the enemy gets great delight when with that spirit of fear, he causes us to begin to fear what we can do nothing about. I don't know about you, but I'm a person that I really like to figure out things. I, I like to work things out. If my family faces something, I like to figure out how to bring them through the hardship, to to help them through you know, their sickness, whatever it is. I, I'm a person that I like to fix things. But when we can't fix it, and where we're at in our world today, in, in this situation, is totally, completely, out of your hands, out of my hands, out of our control. The enemy comes to us and he gets great delight when he causes us to fear what we can do nothing about. He'll cause us to fear what may or may not even even touch us. We may not even be affected by this. It may not even touch any one of our family members, but if he can get us to believe that it's going to and to fear it so much, it brings torment and this torment comes from the spirit of fear and it is sent straight from hell to control your heart and your mind and whenever that begins to happen it overshadows our faith it overshadows our confidence it overshadows our trust and it begins to snuff out the peace that god has promised to give us in hours like this our scripture tells us once again, God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but he has given unto us power. He has given unto us love and he has given unto us a sound mind. I know many of you will know the words to this old song and, and it has rung over and over in my mind through this, this thing that we're going through right now. But the first verse begins with these words. I don't know about tomorrow. There it is. There's that unknown. There's the future that the enemy wants to bring the spirit of fear upon us to tantalize our hearts and minds. The, the first verse of that song starts with, I don't know about tomorrow. And then it goes on and it tells, you know, beautiful song. Then it goes into the course. But I love what the end of the course says. First verse first part says, I don't know about tomorrow, but the end of the course says, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. Friend, I want to tell you right here and right now, the spirit of fear will do everything that it can to snuff out the peace of God and to snuff out your confidence in God in this hour. But when you can get a hold of the fact I don't know what tomorrow holds, but there's one thing I do know. I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Sure, you may ask me right now, Sister Rita, are you meaning by what you're telling us that you've not felt these emotions or these feelings of fear, that you've not struggled with it? I'll be honest with you. I have struggled with times of, of concern and even fear. I have family members that are very high risk. They're very high risk. If they would, would get this virus, and, and here I go. What does the devil do? He comes, with me to, he comes to me with the what ifs. He comes to me with the negatives, thoughts of, of this, if this happens, and he plays the whole thing out in my mind. I, I see what, you know, this could happen, that could happen. And, that's what the devil wants me to focus on. And I could allow this to control me, as you can. 
But we have a choice. We can choose to allow the spirit of torment, the spirit of fear, to torment our minds and to torment our hearts. Or you and I can make the choice. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to let His Word prevail in my heart and in my mind. It is very important in these days, these troubling hours, that we keep our minds stayed upon the Lord. It's very important. He tells us in His Word that these things will come. What things? Wars, famines, earthquake, pestilence. He said these things will come before He returns. But He tells us something. He says, but don't let your hearts be troubled. Let not your hearts be troubled. He tells us in St. John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. Verse 18, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. Verse 27, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And then he repeats what he said in verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. What did he say? When these things began to happen, lift up your eyes, lift up your head, lift up your hearts. Your redemption draweth nigh. Friend, it is God's will in these troubling hours that his children have peace, a peace that passes all understanding. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. He wants us to shine bright a confidence that our God is in control. So we will not fear. If the world sees us fearing and trembling and, and, and wringing our hands and not knowing what to do, what are they going to do? But if they can see in you and I a firm confidence that our God is in control, they'll come to us and they'll ask us, how did you go through this with such peace? How did you go through this with such a, a, a confidence that everything is going to be okay? And it'll open up a door for you and I to witness that we know our God is in control. We don't have to fear the what is. We don't have to fear the unknown. We don't have to fear the future because our God is in control of the future. God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but let us finish it, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It's not the will of God that our hearts fail with fear in this hour. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And in closing, I want to say, if there's a sinner that is watching this today, I want to tell you, if you're feeling the fear, you don't have the refuge that we have as the children of God. Can I encourage you? Can I challenge you to call upon the Lord? First of all, in repentance of your sins, call upon Him. Ask Him to be Lord of your heart and your life. And when you do this, the peace of God will come in. And as the children of God, when we recognize that fact, we are able, by the Word of God, keeping our minds stayed upon the Lord, the power of God that He gives to us through the power of the Holy Ghost, we are able to rise above the spirit of fear that comes from the pits of hell. Be encouraged. Don't let fear fill your heart, but let the peace of God rule and reign, that peace that passeth all understanding. God bless you, and may He give to you His peace in this troubled hour.